Welcome guys to the only video tutorial online covering this topic. In this video, we're going to talk about how to serve a separate website as a subdirectory on another website. It sounds a little bit confusing, but if you found this, you probably know what I'm talking about. So essentially the, the major use case for this is if you have a domain, say example.com, and then you have a blog and you're wondering if you should put it on blog.example.com, uh, which is a subdomain or put it on a subfolder or subdirectory which would be example.com slash blog the reason you would do this is for seo and so you probably already have decided you want to go this route and if that's the case check in the description below for the timestamp to jump to the code section where i'm going to show you actually how to implement it i want to just make the case first on why you should be doing it this way or why you should not the major reason is for SEO. Now, it, I'm going to show you a couple of articles that kind of contradict each other, and this is the story of SEO. But ultimately, we pretty much know that having your blog on your main domain is going to be better for SEO. So this is the infamous video that everybody references when it comes down to this topic, and it's Google explaining that there's really no difference for SEO for a subdomain or for a subdirectory. Now, with anything that Google tells us, we have to really analyze it because they often say one thing, but it doesn't really always mean exactly that. They're admitting some other stuff. So they're not lying, but there's just other context you have to be aware of. And so what Google is saying here is that the web search is fine with either using subdomains or subdirectories, which is true. So if you have a brand new domain and you're deciding to put your blog on a subdomain or your regular main domain, it doesn't make a difference for SEO. Google doesn't look at subdomains as like a lesser of a domain and not treat it well within rankings. And so that statement is true. But where this unfolds is when it comes to a site that's already existing and has built up a lot of search engine optimization and backlinks and just authority on the internet. Creating a subdomain is kind of like creating a new domain and it won't perform as great as if you use the domain you've already built up so much authority in. And so that's where this kind of falls apart is they're not really talking about using a domain that's already doing really well on the internet. They're just saying two domains, it, it, makes, it makes no difference. But in this case, we have a domain that we're already using that's already built up authority. And so if we were to put our blog on a subdomain, it's kind of like starting new. I, it's, it's definitely not where the existing domain is, and I'm not sure. It's somewhere between the existing domain and starting new. Maybe it is starting new, or maybe it's somewhere in between, but it's just better if you were to host it on your main domain because it's going to rank better. There is this tweet from Rand Fishkin that says, are you in need of 14 case studies to back up the assertion that moving a subdomain to a subfolder almost always increases search traffic? And then he goes on to show 14 different case studies of this exact argument that moving a subdomain to a subfolder does indeed impact SEO positively. And so that is the argument of why you should use your main domain for all of your content. Now from a technology perspective, it doesn't always make sense to group all of your websites into one. Maybe your main website isn't great at blogging and you need a separate platform that's great at blogging. And that's where you do wanna use two different uh, systems, applications, content management systems. So here we are, we have two different systems that we own that we want to serve from our one domain without putting the blog or the application on a subdomain. And this is how you do it. We're going to use Cloudflare and its workers. Essentially what happens is Cloudflare is the DNS. And so when somebody goes to your website, it always goes to Cloudflare before it goes to your server. In there, they have a concept of workers, which allow you to run small code snippets before it hits your server. And so we're going to put a code snippet on Cloudflare that basically looks to see what URL is being asked for. And if it falls within the URL that we want to take and swap out our uh, subdomain and serve it as a subdirectory, we're gonna do that right here. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna give you the code to be able to swap out. Uh, so all you have to do is just change out your URLs. Now we're looking at an example that Cloudflare has given us uh, that will serve a example domain so there's example.com 
um, whenever you go to this URL here. So we're not on example.com right now, but if I were to go to example.com, that is what this these contents would show. So here we are, example.com is in fact being served up by this other domain. So Cloudflare's example works well, but I've tweaked mine a bit to work for my instance, and I think you're gonna want to too. So I just wanted to point out that they have this, but let's go over to Cloudflare. We go over to the workers section, and we wanna to go to manage workers, and I already added one, but just click create worker, and here is mine. We're gonna edit the code. I'm gonna get rid of everything I've had in there and show you what you need to add. All right, so this will be in the description below. Essentially, we're looking for any time a URL is loaded, we're going to get the URL, and then we're going to replace the URL. So I'm looking for my main domain URL, and then I'm going to swap it out with my subdomain URL. I don't actually have this on a subdomain yet, so it's actually a different domain, but you can just swap out any domain uh, with the existing one. And uh, we're going to put in the rules in a bit on what paths that this should happen in. And now you'll see that if you have looked online for articles, everybody has conditions in here to say, OK, only do this if it's happening on the slash blog path. But those are a little bit outdated because Cloudflare has recently introduced that logic outside of the code. And I'm going to show that to you in a second. And so basically all you need to do here is put your the domain you want swapped out with the, uh, the new domain. OK, and then we're going to click Save. Now, as of right now, this code won't run at all. And here is why. I'm going to go back to the workers. And now we need to click Add Route. So when we add a route, it tells Cloudflare on which URLs we should run this code. And that's what I was saying, that a lot of the articles online have this logic within the code, but you don't need to put that in there anymore. And so that's why I wanted to make this video to show you like an updated resource on how to do this properly. All right, so what we need to do is add our URL in of the path we want to look for. And so mine is slash authorities. Yours might be slash blog um, or whatever the, the subdirectory is that you want to swap out with your subdomain. Put that in here. I also put an asterisk in the front and the back uh, just because those will match anything. So if there's anything in front or back that changes, um, it'll match that. If you only want one page, then you can put the exact match in there but I'm gonna keep it like that and then select my worker. So now it's saying on this URL, whoops, on this URL, run this code, this worker, and we're gonna click save. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to this URL. I'm getting page not found right now, but it does take sometimes just a little bit to kick in. So I'm going to resume the video once it is done. Okay, it was like 30 seconds later and it loaded. Now, uh, this is a separate website. So it is successfully loading the separate website. But, but this is the website that it should be loading. And so if we look it is a little bit different. What we're missing is all of our asset files, the CSS and JavaScript and stuff like that. And this is uh, how you find out where your asset URL is because you're going to need to know it. You can go to inspect element and then go over to the console. And then I'm going to reload so it renders here. And so what it's saying is it's failing to load these resources. This is a CSS file. This is a CSS file. We got some images in here. And the problem is it's trying to find them at our main domain where in fact these files are in our uh, subdomain or other website. And so what we need to do is go back to the Cloudflare workers. We need to add a route and then we need to add the route of your CSS files. And so we're going to do the same thing where I'm going to say we're looking for the main domain. But now I'm saying if it goes to sites default files, which is right here, sites default files, we need to swap out the main URL with the uh, the subdomain or other URL. And so I'm going to run the same worker because all this worker does is swap out the URL. I'm going to click save. And now this worker will run on my web page and any of the assets that are supposed to get loaded with it. And so we'll try to reload right now. And boom, my assets are there. Uh, I read online that you're going to have a problem with this if you're using um, the same asset directory as your main website. 
And so if your main website uses site's default files and your subdirectory uses site's default files for your CSS, then it doesn't, it's not going to be able to find the other ones. Um, there is some information on the internet uh, on an article I found. I'll try to link that below if I can find it again, but I didn't run into that problem, so I don't have to troubleshoot that one. And then just to show you right now, I'm on attorneyatlawmagazine.com slash authorities. And if I were to click home, I now get navigated to this is a WordPress site. And then the other one I was on was a Drupal website. So there are two different websites that's getting served up. Now, hang on, I want to tell you one more thing. And that's the caveats that come along with this or the nuances. This only works if you're loading content from the server, which is called a Git request. If you're sending information to the server, which is called a post request, this won't work. So submitting forms or logging in won't work. So if I were to try to log in here, it just wouldn't let me in. Uh, and so you have to keep that in mind. If you want your user submitting forms or anything like that, it won't work. You could probably embed a form uh, from a, an external service and it would work that way. But anything that's getting sent directly to your server and not a third party server is just not going to work. There you have it, guys. I hope this really helps your SEO and you get more traffic driven to your site and you still get the benefit of being able to use two different applications to accomplish what you're looking for. Thank you so much for watching till the end, guys. I appreciate you and I cover a lot of content on Cloudflare and a lot of technical stuff. Check out the channel if you're interested in it. Thanks for stopping by, guys, and we'll catch you later.